don't have to worry about the bag being down, bag being up. Um, bag of fluid is not required, and the amount that we take with us would be the amount we need for the transport. If we need to take the bag along and draw up other syringes or draw up multiple syringes prior to leaving, that's what we can do. Um, syringe pumps, you know, back in the day we used dial up flows to control everything. A syringe pump lets us to control the amount of medication given or fluid over a specific period of time. So it's much, gives us much more better control over what we're giving. Uh, controls to the lowest amounts because you can give a a small bolus, you can purge the line, you can do everything with this syringe pump. Now, you know, going back to paramedic school or school, remember the old volume divided by time in minutes times drop factor, gives you the flow rate, you had a count and time and all that fun stuff. We don't have to worry about that because the pump with its internal memory is basically doing it for us. So, as many of you are aware, our primary pump is this wonderful old Baxter pump that we've seen over the centuries. Now, the equipment you need for it is very minimal, actually. What we need is a 60cc syringe, usually. You can go with smaller syringes because the syringes, different size syringes are mounted in it. Um, you're going to be asked the question of what company makes a syringe, so look at the paper. Um, BD, Trusimo, what's the other thing? Extension tubing. This isn't something you can just use your regular IV tubing for. If we just use a longer extension tubing we have over there, and we're going to attach it either to an infusion port on the, the present tubing and the person or right to the lock setup. Um, if we need to draw the medicine out of the bag, we can either draw it out of one of the ports or you can use a, a blunt plastic cannula or needle and draw it out of the bag so you get your 60 cc's. And IV drip attached to the patient with drug running. So we're going to draw our drug or our infusion out of the patient. Now some people have been told recently that hooking them through our infusion pumps is um, not maintaining, it's establishing where they're wrong. Okay, whenever we use their fluid or whatever drug they're on and put on our pump, we're just maintaining the line from point A to point B. We're not establishing anything new. Now, the steps for preparation. Okay. We want to make sure that the drug that they're calling us, because so many times some of these hospitals call us and say, oh, we've got a drip going, and our, some of our dispatchers, and before this, some other dispatchers would say, okay, and then find out that it's mannitol or something really, really cool. We need to make sure that the drug that we're hauling is on the approved list. Okay, we're going to prepare the syringe with the blunt cannula or if we're going to draw it out of a port or a transfer needle, we need to prepare the syringe. Now, keep that aseptic, te or aseptic technique going. We want to either clean the port on the bag or the, the infusion port with an alcohol prep prior to attaching the syringe to it. And we want to draw the drug up. Now, if we're going to be drawing it up from a port, we want to make sure that we occlude the line closest to the patient. So we're drawing it out of the bag instead of trying to suck stuff up from the patient. <coughs> are we going too fast or are we going this? Okay, I really went basic with this. Insert blunt into port of bag or empty push site, you make sure it lines included distal to the port. Now, if you're going, if you got something going at 30 cc's an hour, you get 60 cc syringe and you know the transport's going to be four hours. 
you're going to run out. So the best thing to do is draw up two 60cc syringes at the site and maybe even take the bag with you in case you run into traffic or whatever. Now I always, after I draw them up, I make sure I put a piece of tape around the syringe and I label with what medicine it is in case something else comes up or I lose my mind or whatever. That way I know what's in that syringe or when we have people with multiple drips. That way you know if pump one has heparin in and pump two has calcium or potassium or whatever. We're going to prime the extension tubing. Now, the options here is you can take and hook up the syringe and prime it by using the purge. You can just push the fluid through it, from the syringe through it to prime it, or you can use a regular um, 10 cc syringe of saline, prime the tubing before you hook it to the syringe. Now, insert the 60 cc syringe and tubing in the pump. This is the part that um, is a little confusing. There's a switch on the back. When you pull it, it pops this open. That's where the syringe is going to sit. With this, you just pull this out. This slides till it covers the syringe. And you need to make sure the flanges are underneath this little black. Program the pump the same settings that are on the hospital pump. So you look at the hospital pump and it says that it's going at 15 milliliters an hour. Set yours to 15 milliliters an hour. We'll get to the programming part here in just a minute. Um, in the handouts, the one that says operator's manual, <coughs> there'll be a page in there that is just the quick down and dirty of how to program it. There's another page that is for uh, continual infusion, and there's one for timed infusion. So you can keep these with you, or we'll get some of them out in the truck. So if you have a uh, moment of not remembering, you can use it to walk through. I don't know why I still have that slide. Okay. Now, the last page of that is the keypad on the wonderful Baxter syringe pumps. I figured we'd give you a copy of it, so it's in the one with the uh, owner with the manual. Okay, turn the pump on. The switch for the Baxter pump facing it is on the left-hand side. Okay, you just turn it on. It's going to play some music. It's going to come up with a whole bunch of numbers and stuff on there. And then you're going to think the battery's dead. Because I've had people come to me and say, well, the pump's dead. If you just wait a second, it's right now it's running its self-check. Okay, so now it comes up and it says date invalid, which I don't worry about that. This pump had belonged to the NICU, so NICU comes up. Okay, um, we have some that say NICU, we have some that just say none, we have some I think say life flight yet. Yeah. Now if you look at that on the owner's manual thing, the face of the pump, there is an up and down arrow. <coughs> it will be these two arrows here. So you push one of those, and this one comes up none right now. If you push it again, it could come up library, uh, which with this being programmed for the NICU, it has the analgesics, um, cardio drugs. You can pick any of those and then choose the drugs that's in there already. But for our part, the best thing to do is just go to the none. And then the bottom, right over here, says confirm. Hit confirm, and it'll say select mode. Now, when you, when 
when you um, do the select mode, what's going to happen is it's going to come up and it's going to say what you want to infuse, the amount you want to infuse, the amount, maximum dose, and right here, this one usually comes up as milliliters per hour as the default. But you can use the up and down buttons to scroll around. And there's micrograms per kilogram per minute and micrograms per minute, single dose, and back to the milliliters per hour. So most of the drips we haul, it's been my experience, has been the milliliters per hour. So we want milliliters per hour, we push that confirm button again, and it'll say verify, well this one says verify BD. Some of them say pick the syringe that it is. Well, our 60C syringes are the BD60s. So you just push confirm to verify that it is 60. Then it says select size. It says 60, 30, 20, 10, 5, 3, 1. Okay, so we're going to pick the 60 and press confirm. Enter rate. So now it gets really simple. You see the rate's supposed to be, what do we want to say it is? Uh, enter rate using the keypad. So say we want to have it at 15 cc's an hour. Push the one, whoops, I put seven. Enter the 15 and push confirm. Enter the volume limit using the keypad. A lot of times when I'm using these, instead of putting 60, even though I have 60 drawn up, I'm going to put 55, 58, something like that. So I get a warning when we're getting close to the end, so I know that it's getting time to change over. Put the amount that you want to infuse, the total you have to infuse in, <coughs> and press confirm. So, that's, uh, this might be a little disorganized. I threw it together working on it today. Um, now, if you want to prime the line or purge the line, it comes up with like a distal occlusion, or um, you just want to flush the line through because you've got big air bubbles in it or whatever. The simplest thing to do is disconnect it from the patient. and then push the purge button. Purge button is right there. You push that button, press start, and it'll run through like the CC or something and it'll push it through the line. Once, th once it's finished purging, we're flushing the line, it'll go into a standby mode. So if you're not watching it, after a few seconds, it'll set off an alarm that says that it's not running. But if you're watching it, when the purge is done, you just push the start button up here at the top, the green button again, and it'll go back to what your original settings were. So we got it all programmed to match the hospitals. I must have moved that slide in a weird place. Sorry for being confusing. Disconnect the line from the patient. So we're going to disconnect whatever IV is running to the patient. Then we're going to put the same fluid going back in through our, out of our pump into that line. That's what the idle sound sounds like. Attach the line from the syringe pump to that site. Make sure you cleanse the site with alcohol. Press the start button and away you go. Um, you'll see these little lights over here. It says run. You'll start seeing them going down. So once they're going, then you know that the pump's running appropriately. Any questions so far, even though I've confused you all?
because I'm confused. <clears throat> you did mention the air bubbles. Mm -hmm. And when you get a little tiny air bubble that goes past those sensors, it's hard to clear them. Even if you take it, it all apart and you make sure there's not a single air bubble in there, it's still going to detect an air bubble. Mm -hmm. They're a pain in the ass to clear. Right. Well, and, but these aren't quite as bad as some of the other ones. Right. Which is nice. <laughs> So I would turn them on their side and caulk it. Exactly. <laughs> so if you need a bolt, if a bolus is needed, you can press the bolus button, which is right here. So say that it said that you get orders to give, you know, a, a 20 cc bolus of whatever medicine. What you do here is you push the <coughs> bolus button, or you shut it off. You just push stop, not shut it all off. And you press the bolus button. Now once you've pressed the bolus button, you're going to get a screen that comes up that says put the amount of bolus in milliliters. 15 milliliters, 20 milliliters. If you're giving like a milligram dosage, then you have to know what your concentration is so you can figure out how many milliliters uh, you're supposed to give. Once you press confirm, bolus ready will appear at the top of the little screen. At that point, you push the start button, and you will hear it just run. It's, it's set that it comes up at 336 cc's an hour or a minute. And you'll just hear it run, and it'll give that bolus. And when that bolus is in, then it'll go to the standby mode again. And when it goes to the standby mode, you just It'll alarm if you leave it on too long, and if you don't, if you see it, just push start again, and it'll go back to your original settings. Any questions? Okay. We all right on that? No questions, no comments, no your jerk. Cool beans. So, now Mr. Jake here has volunteered to come Jake, up with one or two. <laughs> two. He was one up where I would come to. You have your PowerPoint on the I just need to log in and remote just to my computer. Be. If I could remove.